So I got this interesting email from Amazon. Apparently one of my batteries is going flat. So this is a device I connected up to Alexa on the 22nd of January 2023. Now interestingly I actually ordered this back in 27th of November 2016. So this battery has lasted absolutely ages. Um, so that's pretty impressive. But even more interesting there's a link here and we can view the device usage history. So if we go over to here to inventory history you can see We've got lots and lots of measurements of the battery level. Now that's pretty cool to have this little chart but it's not particularly useful. But what's really handy if you look at the network requests when you're hitting next you can see it's sending off this request to a server. And if we look at the contents of this request you can see we've got all the data here. So with the help of my friend ChatGPT I wrote a little web scraper to download all this data. So I've got my code here um, what I need to do is copy out one of the cookies from these requests and paste it in and then we can run this and it goes off and downloads all of the data from Amazon. So very nice of Amazon to store all my data for me. Now unfortunately it's not all of my data. It only goes back to about two weeks ago. So the latest is on the 21st and it goes back to the 6th. But now I know this data is here I might start downloading it regularly. So I've got my very own free IoT service, although it does come at the cost of Jeff Bezos constantly sending me messages saying to buy new batteries. Now what's really interesting is what happens when we plot the data. So I've downloaded all the data. Um, you can see here, if we look at these timestamps, you can see it's recording a measurement pretty much every 15 minutes. So here's one at 1.46, 2 minutes past 2, 17 minutes past 2, 32 minutes past 2. So about every 15 minutes it pings the device, gets the battery level and sends it off to Amazon. So if we plot this, it's pretty noisy. So you can see there's quite a noisy set of data here, but we can clean that up by averaging some of the values. Now this is pretty interesting. There's actually quite an interesting pattern here. If I put on markers for each day, it becomes even more interesting. So you can see every day there's a bit of a pattern. So the battery voltage goes down, then it goes up, then it starts going down again. Now if we zoom in to just a couple of days, we can see this really clearly. Now what's happening is that if we look here at this particular day, you can see the battery level during the night keeps going down. So from midnight down to around 6am, our battery level keeps decreasing. Then it starts going up again. Now what's interesting is our heating goes off overnight and our bedroom is pretty cold. So the temperature in the bedroom is going down from when the heating goes off. So if we move over to here, you can see around 8 or 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, that's when it starts getting dark here and our heating goes off pretty early. So the battery voltage starts going down as soon as the bedroom starts to get cold. And then during the night the bedroom is quite cold and the battery level is quite low. Then around 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock our heating comes on and the room starts warming up and the battery level starts going up again. So our battery levels get ranging from around 5% capacity up to around 25% capacity. So that's really interesting. Just shows, goes to show the effect that temperature has on what your battery can output. And that is backed up by the science. So if we look at this chart here, you can see that at zero degrees, the output voltage from the battery is pretty low and it goes up as the temperature increases. Now, as I say, I've had this device for quite some time, so it is time to change the battery, but I thought that's a really useful chart. Thank you, Amazon, for collecting this data. I'm pretty sure I did agree to you collecting this. I must have ticked a box at some point. So really handy. Let's get the battery changed and I might try and plug in one of these rechargeable batteries instead of one of the disposable ones because I don't really like throwing batteries away. But I want to check the PCB and make sure it can handle the higher voltage. So I've taken the whole thing apart and to get the battery out you do just need to remove this cover. But I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the PCB and see what's on it. Um, talking about PCBs, I'm sure you've heard of PCB way. PCB way. Go to PCB Way for all your PCBs. Uh, I've been using them for quite a while and uh, I've had no problems, so I definitely recommend them. But let's have a look at what's on the PCB. So we have this Atmel chip. This is some flash. And this is a little MOSFET that turns power on and off to the flash. So it's obviously designed for very low power. Now, looking at our battery, let's just check our battery level. So let's bring in the multimeter. You can measure the battery. So we have around 3 volts. Um, now if we compare that to a fresh coin cell, so let's see what I've got here. Um, here we go. Uh, so this is a 2032 cell, so it's a bit smaller, but if we measure the voltage on this one, we have 
3.14 volts, so quite a bit higher than our flat one. Now, what I was hoping to do is to replace this with a rechargeable lithium cell. Now, the problem is these rechargeable lithium cells, I've got one here, um, which I've fully charged. The voltage on this, if we measure it, is, um, is around 4.15 volts. So it will go up to 4.2 volts when it's fully charged. Now, that would be fine if this um, PCB had a voltage regulator on it. Now, interestingly, the Atmel chip here that's doing all the hard work and doing all the um, wireless stuff, uh, actually, you can see the uh, onboard antenna here and the matching network. This does have an onboard regulator, but it only takes up to 3.6 volts, which is fine for a coin cell, not so good for one of these rechargeable ones that goes much higher. The, uh, the flash chip could take the voltage. It goes up to 4.5 volts, I think, so that would be fine. This IC here is a, is a MOSFET, and the, um, the Atmel chip is using that to turn power on and off to the flash, so it saves a lot of, um, a lot of uh, power by just turning everything off and going into low power sleep mode until you click one of the buttons. Uh, so clicking the buttons wakes up the chip, wakes up the flash, and then does whatever it needs to do, and then goes back to sleep again. So pretty interesting. Um, it's a very minimalist PCB, not much on it. Um, only really two ICs, the CPU and the flash. So I've got one of these, um, or a few of these coin cells on order. I, um, I didn't realize that it takes bigger ones, not small ones. It's probably why the battery lasted so long, because uh, it's quite a big cell really. So we'll plug that in tomorrow, and then we'll check with Amazon and see if the battery reports full power. So via the magic of television, the new batteries have arrived. I've unwrapped this one already. Let's measure the voltage um, and see what we have on this brand new fresh battery. So 3.25 and then this is the, the old flat battery. 3 volts. Let's test these batteries under some load. So I've got a 1k resistor here. Let's bend the wires so that it makes a good contact. And uh, stick the battery between them. And this is the old flat battery, so 2.9. Uh, let's try that on our new fresh battery. Still 3.2. Uh, get the probes the right way around. 3.2. So there you go. Pretty good. So let's get this new battery installed and then we'll monitor the uh, voltages or the battery capacity from Amazon. So I thought I'd do an interesting experiment. I put the old battery in the fridge for a few minutes. Um, let's see how it performs now. So get the connection. Um, so I think before it was 2.9, now 2.8. So the battery being cold definitely seems to affect the performance. So that's pretty interesting and matches up what we're seeing in the data. So that's good. The science appears to work. So I've just been warming the battery up in my hand. Uh, it's now nice and nice and warm. So let's do the same test again. Back up to, well, possibly even higher, 2.95 because the battery is now at body temperature. So yeah, really interesting. Let's see what the chart is like from Amazon after a couple of days. Well, unsurprisingly, it's not the most interesting of charts. Our battery is reporting 100% all the time. So I'll keep an eye on this over the next few months and um, see what happens. But uh, it's fixed now. Battery works. An interesting project.